a beauty title from their own countries entitling them to participate in this, the world's most prestigious beauty pageant. Their destination, Miami Beach, international playground and home of the 1969 Miss Universe pageant. Representatives from over 70 countries descend on Miami Beach annually for this event, which over the years has become more than just a beauty contest. Even the official welcoming committee is charmed by the graciousness and diplomacy of the contestants, a quality that turns every pageant into a showcase for international goodwill and a tribute to the ideal that nations of the world can live and work together in peace. Once the greetings are over, the girls are whisked away in their official Avis cars to the beachfront resort hotels that will serve as their home during their stay. Hotels like the Shelbury, the Shore Club, the Algiers, the Fontainebleau, and the Monte Carlo. And before they know it, they're all caught up in the glamour that is the Miss Universe pageant. A beauty queen must look her best from the top of her head to the tip of her toes. Butler is the official shoe of the 1969 Miss Universe pageant. Butler shoes, a fashion favorite of the style conscious contestants. Last minute touch ups on makeup are looked after by the qualified beauty consultants of Aloe Cosmetics, the official cosmetics for this year's pageant. Finally, with every hair in place, every nose powdered, the girls are ready. The show opens with a traditional parade of nations. Each contestant, dressed in a costume reflecting her native country, parades before the auditorium audience. The television channels relay the evening's drama to an estimated audience of over 60 million people across the country. If the girls are nervous as they parade up and down the runway, they don't show it. Each one reflects an air of confidence, responding to the frequent, spontaneous outbursts of applause with beaming smiles. It's their night, and they know it. And so do the judges. The first special award of the evening, Miss Tunisia, is named Miss Amity by her fellow contestants. Pageant MC Bob Barker introduces his television co-hostess, the lovely and talented actress June Lockhart. Another special award, Miss Universe Incorporated President Harold Glasser presents the trophy for the best native costume to Miss Thailand as the audience applauds the decision. major elimination of the evening finds the field reduced from 70 contestants to 15 semi-finalists. Dressed in their official Catalina swimsuits, the girls parade up and down the runway before the judges, who rate each girl on a separate ballot according to a special point system. Points are accumulated for symmetry of figure, beauty, grace of carriage, and the judges recall the impressions they received about the contestants during their personal interviews. All these things shape the judge's decision. But for the audience, the decisions are usually much simpler. For most, they are based on a preference for blondes or brunettes, tall girls or short girls, on national loyalties, or a faint remembrance and feeling of kinship to some ancestral origin, or perhaps even on a well-timed smile from a contestant. The judges are introduced. Dynamic Broadway producer David Merrick, Model agency owner Eileen Ford. Brazilian newspaper man Edilson Sid Barella. The former Miss Universe for 1962, Argentina's Norma Nolan Zanotti. World renowned Chinese American artist Don Kingman. Canadian photographer Joseph Park. International public relations consultant Gino de Grandi. Former fashion model and cover girl from Guyana, Lady Sarah Carter. Dress designer and design consultant from Japan, Madame Chiu Tanaka. The talented Belgian actress, Monique Van Voren. Director of Belgian Tourist Bureau, Peter A. de Marais. And popular syndicated newspaper columnist, Earl Wilson. The final special award of the evening is presented to Miss New Zealand. 
voted the most photogenic contestant in this year's pageant by the South Florida News Photographers Association. Association President John Foster makes the presentation. The 15 semi-finalists present a vision of elegance as they gracefully glide across the stage and down the runway in their evening gowns to give the audience and the judges one more look before the selection of the five finalists. With such an array of lovely young women to choose from, the decision will not be an easy one. The voices of the foreign newscasters relaying the events of the pageant in many languages around the world reflect the feeling of excitement as the five finalists are named. Finland, Harriet Eriksson from Turku. Miss Israel, Shava Levy from Haifa. Miss Australia, Joanne Barrett from Melbourne. Miss Philippines, Gloria Diaz from Parnake. And Miss Japan. Kikuyo Osuka from Nagoya. <laughs> Miss Japan is named fourth runner-up. <laughs> Miss Israel, third runner-up. Miss Australia, second runner-up. There's a suspenseful moment as both Miss Finland and Miss Philippines realize that one of them is the next Miss Universe. The foreign radio correspondents stand by to announce the name of the winner to a waiting world. And the winner is Miss Philippines, Gloria Diaz, a 5-foot, 5-inch, 115-pound, 18-year-old beauty from Parnaki, a suburb of Manila. proverbial question, are there any more at home like you? The new queen smiles and says, yes, nine more sisters and two more brothers. If the other nine Diaz girls are anything like their newly crowned sister, the Philippines could corner a future market on beauty queens. But right now, the spotlight and the eyes of the world are on Gloria. Along with the title, in the honor of being Miss Universe, Gloria will receive a $10,000 cash award and a $10,000 personal appearance contract, plus many other gifts. Gifts including a six-piece wig wardrobe by Boutique Wigs, a subsidiary of IMEX Corporation. And a $7,500 Tourmaline Emba Natural Pale Beige Mink Coat designed by Donald Brooks for Kupchik Forest of New York and presented to the Queen by the Emba Mink Breeders Association. But most important, as Miss Universe, Gloria will have the opportunity to travel around the world, making friends for the Philippines and promoting the cause of international goodwill. <laughs>